Hello everybody, this is Panzermarys36, and today's video is going to be a tutorial about working with these little things. These are Dragon's 1 3rd 5th scale 3 piece photo etched tool clamps. Uh, they are workable and insanely small, very fiddly, but in the end I would say they are worth it because they do look incredible and much better than just the little plastic molded on parts you get even though those are pretty good on dragon kits like this. You will find these tool clamps in uh, kits like this. This is uh, based off a of Grilly self rolled howitzer. You'll find it in kits like that. Uh, the Martyr 3 series, which is almost exactly the same as this. And in certain other spark kits, based on like the Panzer 3 chassis, I'm fairly certain. But in those ones, it's an option. You also get the normal tools as well with the clamps molded on. In this kit, you do not. You only get the normal tools and then those you do not get plastic tool clamps and also on dragons uh, Panzer 4 smart kits or sorry the super kits those ones have lots of photo watch tool clamps and lots of photo watch everything else honestly there's tons of photo watch in those kits but they're beautiful and I'm pretty sure that you get these in certain Tiger 1 kits as well though again I think that might be an option though I'm no expert on dragon Tiger 1 that's Adam Mann's area so in this video I'm just going to show you assembling them, just cutting them off the sprue, or the fret I guess you call it, because it's photo etched, and then doing the clean up and then actually kind of fiddling with them until they kind of pop together. And I also show them, uh, or show them being built in the way that I do it, which is slightly different than the Dragon Instructions show because uh, I don't think the Dragon Instructions are entirely accurate with the way they are depicted. And my way makes them workable and they look just as good in my opinion at least, because the difference is so small you can barely even notice it. So let's get into the madness. <laughs> so the first step in assembling these tool clamps is to remove them from the PE fret. For that I use a fresh blade, usually a toppy knife right now, I just have this on hand. And I need three parts per, so I gotta go find them. And what I do is I try to cut them as close to the actual part as possible. But there's a small enough as I can end up with. And then I'll actually sand them down a little bit after I've already removed them. So here's one of the little PE parts for one of the clamps, and as you can see, the end of it where I cut it off isn't perfectly smooth. I'm holding it in a pair of pliers so I can get a good grip on the tiny little part and so that it won't slip away, and then I'm just going to take my sanding stick. These are one of my sanding files that I usually use for plastic, and I can actually use it to just gently work at the top of it and to sand away that little bump where it was attached to the PE fret. So here are the three parts needed to build one tool clamp, all sanded up and ready to bend. To do the bending, I only use a pair of pliers like this, a little pair of needle nose pliers, and a hobby knife if I needed to use any like, delicate bending measures really, but I don't have any special PE tools, I find that you'd never need them. This works perfectly fine for me. So the first step is going to be to, we're going to start with the bottom one here. This one needs to be bent into kind of a U shape. So I'm going to grab the part from the second bend for in from this side and kind of push it into the U shape gently and I can also just kind of do the other bit by hand if I can get it. There we go. It's supposed to be a little more open than 90 degrees, but it doesn't really matter. As you can see, it's like that now. And then there's this little part at the end. Now you're supposed to bend this one outwards, but I actually bend it inwards because I find that that looks a little, well it works a little better that way. Because as I'm going to explain in a moment, 
the way you actually put them together is different than the instructions show, at least the way I do it, because in the instructions the parts aren't exactly the same as how they are in reality. Now the next part to fold is this part here, the latch of the actual tool clamp. This one's fairly easy as it's just two 90 degree bends until it's at a U shape. Which is, you know, fairly simple, you just kind of go like that. Now right now it's a little more open, I'm actually going to kind of close it up a little more when I actually get the parts slotted into it. And this here is the final part. This bit is a little difficult because you have to make it rounded. Because this is kind of like the uh, the part that actually is getting like a flexible metal. So when you latch the tool down, it kind of flexes and bends over it and holds the tool in, in uh, place. So to make it bent, I'd really just use the pliers and slowly kind of just work at it until it kind of bends a little bit. I have to keep moving the pair of pliers back and forth so I don't actually just bend it in one spot. I want to kind of do a bunch of tiny little bends so that's not noticeable and it really just appears like the actual part itself is bent. That's pretty good right there as you can see. It's got a little bit of bend to it and that's enough. Now here's how they show it in the instructions. As you can see they show you, well first of all they show the part at the bottom having kind of like forks that stick out. In reality, they don't actually stick out that way. They only stick out a tiny bit, kind of like that one there. So what I actually do is I flip that part around and then use those two kind of pins sticking out to fit it into the two outer slot or little holes here. And then with this one, I do the same thing since it's really like that. It doesn't have those two little prongs that stick out straight. It only has to go to the sides. So I flip that around as well and slot it into the two bottom holes. And then I just kind of glue it together at one end. This is really what the tool clamps look like in real life. That end kind of locks underneath the two little prongs there. And then when you pull this thing down, it tightens it. And then to release the clamp, you push that up. It loosens it and you can actually kind of take those things and slide them out around there and open up the tool clamp as it's shown right here. And again, the parts don't look exactly like this, so I actually do it kind of backwards. But that way the clamp is actually workable and then you can actually kind of get into into proper place and then add a little bit of glue just to kind of hold it together in the final position. And since the tool clamp is so small, it's really not noticeable that that part is like non-existent. So now comes the actual assembly of the tool clamp itself. This part is very difficult and very fiddly because the parts are minuscule and they're photo wet so they can fly off and disappear at the you know, drop of a hat. Basically, the step, uh, the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to try to attach the part MA31, as you can see here, which is the top, into the handle, and I'm going to set those two pins into the two holes, one that one, and then the one up the side, that are closest to the kind of like a, the bent here at the end of the actual uh, latch itself. So. Again, those two pins and the farthest set of holes there. I'm doing this one first because that way I can mount the pins in there, close up the tool clamp itself around it, locking in those pins, but I can keep the end of it a little more open so that I can then fit the next set of pins for the bottom part in the, into those two holes and then I can close it up there. And that way it won't, this part won't pop out when I try to open up this, to slot the two pins in there. So that's the mentality and why I do it in this order. So to make sure that, first of all, you put the, uh, the little handle part, the latch, in the right way because it does have a slight angle to it. And then we're going to try to slot the top part into the two little holes on it without dropping it or breaking it or anything like that. But I'm sure many of you work with Photo Wedge and you know this is very, very delicate. So here are the two first parts to put together. I hope you can actually see this, but it's very, very small. But I have actually set, as you can see there, maybe the two pins from the top of the uh, clamp into the smaller holes, which are closest to the base of the U of the kind of um, the latch part. So this step here, the next step, is probably the most tedious of them all because you have to put the next part in without 
popping the other two parts apart, which will happen probably a couple times when you do this. It's already happened to me when I assembled the previous one probably twice, so yeah, I've built many of these before. So we're gonna be very careful, but since I already put them in that order, I have a little bit of leeway that I can try to warm the actual pins from this part here, the base, into the two little holes there, hopefully without losing the two other parts. But to make extra sure that I won't lose them, I'm actually going to hold it instead of holding this, the part I'm spinning into the actual holes with the pliers. I'm going to hold the part with the holes. And that way, it won't open up as I'm very carefully holding it closed. I don't want to put too much pressure because then once you push it apart, it'll bend and then open up again. And then I'm going to hold the base with my hands. Just two little pins, and i got to try to slot those into the two holes on this latch part here. So there you can see I have now managed to fit the next part into the two little holes in the actual handle of the clamp. And as you can see, it is workable. All three parts will move back and forth, though I wouldn't test it that much because it eventually will kind of pop out of place if you're not too careful with it. So I would now very delicately, very delicately find the spot I want in the model, put a bit of CA glue on the bottom of the, uh, at least on the kit where I want it to go, use the pliers to then kind of put this on the model, <clears throat> and then I can actually leave it kind of workable now and fit the tools in or whatever and then when I actually want to fix it in spot I take a tiny bit of CA glue, usually I put it on the end of a knife like this with like a toothpick I just dab it on the holes on really just one end of it I'm just kind of like over the holes there a tiny tiny bit and then it will just kind of like seal up the holes and hold it in place and you have to be careful that you don't like grab the model touching them because they'll just shatter into a thousand pieces and fly everywhere and never find them again. But this is one of Dragon's beautiful workable uh, tool clamps. And here you can see I've built three more tool clamps in a couple of hours. Probably took me about two hours to do all four of them. Once you kind of get going you get a, kind of like a, a bit of a flow going and you can put a bunch of them together at once. And they are very cool. I really like how they're workable so you can actually kind of close them up and get your tools in there and everything like that before you actually glue it all in place. And again, as I stated earlier, this is how I do them. This is not exactly how they tell you to do it in the instructions because the instructions are a little bit wrong in the way that they show the, the parts. And so then I do it this way and make it kind of workable and at least look more realistic to me. So, yep, that's about it for this video. I hope this was helpful for anybody who is curious about how the hell these things go together because they are very difficult and I've encountered them a couple of times before and though they are quite a bit of work, I think they're very much worth it. I'm a big fan of photo wedge parts like this and the fact that they add so much more detail to the kit when you look up close it's better than just the plastic molded on kind of like curved fake clamp thing that you get on the dragon parts which is usually pretty good in its own way but I find these are even better. They're a lot of work, but they're really good. And they are quite common in some dragon kits, so I always go with the option of them, and usually in the end you get a couple of extra ones on the, on the uh, BE fret, so you can eventually just kind of have an extra set that you can put on any tank you want. So, yeah, I hope this video was helpful for anybody who's curious about how these things work, and I hope you enjoyed it. As always, thanks for watching, guys. This is Pandemore76, and goodbye.